everyone so this is going to be interesting um my scalp does not already have holes in it so it's going to be a little bit different than if i had obviously gotten it um with holes already so i'm getting my little tool here to help me and i don't know if i'm going to be able to do the loop method or not but i'm just experimenting and you know trial and error so we'll see how it goes I'm not even sure how I feel about this fiber, but um, it's kind of fun, and I think I want to keep it kind of dreadlocky. Uh, it's not really dreadlocks, but you know what I mean. I'm not going to brush through it. I just want to keep that curl, and she's. I'm not going to be brushing her hair or anything. It's more like a, an art doll. So um, we'll see how that turns out, and if I don't like it, then I can always change it. Uh, anyway, the fiber is from this place. Oop, you can't really see it very well, huh? Blue Barn Fiber on Etsy, and they had all kinds of really cool colors and textures and things, so I thought I might as well try something new and different. So anyway, well, here's hoping that this will go well. <laughs> okay, so it turns out I don't think I'm going to do the loop method this time because I don't have a scalp that already has holes in it. and because of the type of fiber I have. I want to keep it kind of together and not let it feather out like this because that's not the effect that I want. In case you guys were wondering how I was getting this done while having a baby, I was breastfeeding her and she laid there, I laid there, and up above her where she could not reach, I had all of my supplies and it was a little bit hard but I could still get some work done so now I'm gonna put this in its little holder here so that I can show you exactly what I've been doing I'm actually pretty happy with how this is turning out um, I'll kind of tell you my process I would take a piece of fiber like this and then see how there's like a fuzzy end here what you want to do or what I did is I want to even it out I brush I hold it pinch it pretty tightly and then I brush the end and then I cut it so that it's even like that and get rid of the other part then I spread out the edges here and very carefully and meticulously root these little pieces into the scalp in a circular pattern all the while keeping this part intact and not making it turn into this because that's yucky so Again, going for the dreaded kind of look. That has been my process. And this is how it's coming out, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's kind of what I had envisioned, and I left a little piece out so that I could show you exactly how I've been rooting it in there. So I take, after brushing it like I showed you, I just take a tiny little bit of the hair and I twist the end because it's easier for me to stick it into the rooting tool. And I don't, I just put the end, the very, very end in, and then I just root it up next to the piece that I just rooted. And I just go all the way around until this lock is finished and as you can see it's still intact here I wanted to show you that I am doing a part in the front so taking a break from the spiral and going down now that this is looking more like how I think it should look I'm gonna show you what I've been doing so I'm gonna leave this here for a second and get a new lock of hair and put this aside 
out of the way here. And you see how it's kind of curly and natted at the end. I, rather than give myself the headache of trying to brush that out, like originally, I just cut it like that and get rid of the ends. I don't really need it that much. And then I spread it out like so, just a little bit. And then it becomes kind of like a weft. And rather than rather than the gluing method, you're going to take each little piece here and poke it through. So it's the same idea as the gluing method, but you're poking it through. Um, mostly when you are rooting, a lot of times you take the middle of the hair and you root that in, but because of the way I want this to turn out, I have needed to kind of adapt. Sorry, this is a little bit too thick. I've had to adapt and do it right at the end like this and then poke it through like that. Okay, so there's one. And then you just do that all the way across. You take each little piece and you poke it through being careful not to unravel or take apart the dread. I just keep calling it a dread because I don't, I don't know what else to call it. Just the lock of hair that I don't want to come undone. And I just go along like so, poking through the weft of hair until it's all in. So, and you don't want to do it you don't want to poke them too close together because then you'll get an undesired thickness like I did at the very beginning. The top of the head has quite a lot of hair and it's not necessary. But maybe that'll be good because it'll cover over the fact that it's more sparse in the bottom. Alright, and mischief managed. Here is the full wig. I have not glued it yet, but this part wants the inside has been glued with a special glue, a fabric glue. You stick this in there and then stick it right on top of the blight. So I will show you what that looks like. Here's an idea of what she's going to look like. So I'm actually really excited. I think it turned out well, um, considering I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, I think the semi-dreadlock look is a good look for her. And I can't wait to see her all put together. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.